Hi, I'm Sabrina, I'm the head tailor at York, and today we're going to make some jeans smaller in the waist. One of the biggest differences between clothes you love and clothes you donate is how they fit. It can be the difference between clothes feeling great and clothes feeling kind of ugh. In this video, we're going to take in a pair of jeans in a way that gives the best fit and that is kind of reversible, so if you ever need to let them out again, that's an option. To do this, you're going to need a hammer for the bulky bits, your shears, tape measure, pins, safety pins, thread, tailor's chalk and your quick on pick. So today we're going to take in my ribcage jeans from a couple of seasons ago. As you can see, they're a bit big and they keep falling down. So, first thing you want to do is pull the jeans up to where you want them to sit, pull the centre back and grab as much of that as you can. Take a safety pin and pin at the bottom of the waistband. You do want this to be quite snug because the jeans will give again like they did when they were new. Pin again at about just below the yoke. Now, a lot of tailors, when they sew this, they would just take it all out at the centre back. But there's three reasons I don't do that. One is that if you take it out in one place, if you take a lot out, you will get a point and no one wants a pointy bum. Another reason is it will make the centre back seem proportionately longer, which looks like a droopy bum, which also isn't great. And if you have a pair of jeans that have noticeable fading on the back seam, then you can see where the old seam ends and the new seam begins, and it just looks a bit naff. For example, this is a pair of jeans I did when I was trying that method out, and you can just about see, hopefully on camera, where the old one ends and the new one begins. I don't like it. So we do it this way. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take these jeans off, I'm going to take that out as two darts. Now I have the jeans to work on, we can prepare them for sewing. Start by chalk marking where the safety pins pin on the inside. And mark both sides of the jean because we're going to unpin them in a minute. So open up your jeans in front of you. So what we're going to do is measure from one mark to the other, so that's two and a half inches. So I'll write that down. And on the other one, it's one and three quarter inches. The most important one is the top one. Because we're taking two and a half inches out total, we're going to take out two smaller darts, one on each side, half that amount. So that's going to be one and a quarter inches there and one and a quarter inches there. Turn your jeans inside out because it's easy to work on. Now unpick a stitch here at one end of the lower waistband and one at the other end. Do the same on the top waistband, then remove three sides of the back patch. You only need to unpick like every third stitch. Pull it out at the other side. You're also going to want to unpick the belt loop because that will get in the way. You don't have to take it off altogether, just the top end. It's usually easier to undo bar tacks of any kind from the back because the stitch is looser there. Now you're going to take off the waistband from one stitch to the other. Same on the top. Now when you take it off, Try to keep these stitches in on the other side because you can try and um, keep them in when you finish it so it looks more discreet. You're going to need to unpick the side label too. You're also going to need to take off the Levi's Premium label. pull this side away. As I say, trying to keep these stitches in place. So now we have basically the back waist to do with as we wish. So now we had the back of the jeans to sew into darts. Pick up one side, roughly halfway along the pocket, but keep the pocket out of the way. Try and keep the yoke matched either side so that it looks better when it's sewn. And just pin that in place for now. The top bit won't always match, but you can sometimes ease it a bit so that it's more even. I'm taking two and a half inches out of the whole back jeans, which means I'm taking one and a quarter inches out of each side. So this bit here is going to look like five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to mark that and pin it. And I'm going to taper this down to where I think it will fit, so that'll be about there for the smoothest fit. 
Choblong and pin. Pin in the direction you're going to sew. I'm going to sew towards the dart point. And I'm going to take my hammer on the sturdiest part of my work surface and just hammer down a bit on the yoke seam. I'm going to repeat on the other side. Now we're at the sewing machine and I'm going to sew the darts. You want to have your stitch length at 3mm or 8 stitches per inch. Take out your first pin, back stitch, and sew to about an inch before the end and then we're going to shorten the stitch. When you get to bulky bits, it helps if you raise your presser foot a bit to let everything step under. And just before you take out, just when you take out your last pin, shorten your stitch length because you want to sew a bit off the edge. And that twists the threads together and essentially ties a sort of knot for you. So snip a small centimetre away from the edge. Repeat for the other side, remembering to lengthen your stitch again. Shorten the stitch for the end. Hammer the darts on the yoke towards the centre back. That'll keep it a bit nicer for when we press it later. So now we're going to take in the waistband. You want to snip it right down the centre back and put these together, matching the original fold lines and stitch lines, and then pin that. Now I'm going to mark my half dart width in from that cut. I'm taking out two and a half inches altogether, so I want to take out one and a quarter inches from here. Pin at that distance in the intersections. So now you're going to sew down that line. Back stitch at the beginning and end to secure because this is a point of strain. If you're confident that you're never going to have to let these out again, you can snip these off. If you think you might need to add it back in again, leave them and we'll sew them in. I'm just going to take, cut them off to about half an inch from the stitch line. Now we're going to take this over to the iron and press it so that we can get a nice finish. So we're going to press the darts towards the centre back. Now on the waistband, I'm going to press the seam allowances open. And you want to fold it into its natural position. Give that a press. Turn the waist seam allowances in on the inside and the outside and steam them down. Now when we get to the sewing machine, we're going to have this tucked inside here. You want to match the original seam line to, well, the original seam line on the inside and the outside. It should match quite well, perfectly even. Well, back at the sewing machine, I have removed the original top stitching thread, so I've tucked the yoke into the waistband, matching the original stitch lines and the centre backs. I'm going to stitch from where I took the threads out all the way along. You want to stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge with your eight stitches for or three millimetres. Back stitch a bit. When you get to the bulky bits, as always, feel free to stop, lift your presser foot, and let things relax before you go on. When you get to the end, Back stitch. Now stitch along the top of the waistband in the same way. So now we're going to stitch this label back on. Now we're going to stitch the leather patch back on. I'm going to remove that, the original stitching, and stitch it on with the thread I'm using generally. There we are. So all we've got to do now is put the size labels back on, which I pinned to the inside so I wouldn't lose them. Now we're going to put the belt loop back on, align it with the centre of the back, with the centre back top, and then longer stitch length again, because you're going over a thick bit anyway, so you need the extra length. Go back and forth over this a few times. So that's pretty much done. What you will notice is that the pockets stick out like buckets. That's just what happens when you take a lot out of the waist. So what we're going to do is unpick down one side and flatten it out and stitch that down. Sometimes you'll have to do both sides, because otherwise you'll end up hitting the side seam. So I might have to do that, but I'll take one side off first and flatten it out and see how it looks and then I'll decide whether I need to do that one. So now I'm going to unpick one side of each pocket and see how that looks. When you do the bar tacks, it's much easier to do them from the inside, which is why I've turned the jeans inside out. 
Go back to the outside when you want to cut in between them. That's going to come quite close. It does come kind of close to the side seam, but I'm okay with that because there's not a lot here to budge with anyway. So I'm going to pin that down and then sew it. So I'm back at the machine and I'm just going to show you how I'm going to stitch the pocket back on. I'm going to start here about an inch before my stitching was pulled out. Come back up here along the original stitch line, go across the bar tack, back down the edge and then back to about an inch after my stitching ends. Then I'm going to come and do a straight stitch bar tack across there and get it out. So that's how you take in a pair of jeans. I'm really happy with the final fit. They feel so much better now that they're properly anchored on my waist. I'm definitely going to wear them more. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Let us know in the comments what you think and remember to like and subscribe. Bye.